you know, and, but it, it seems to be a growing, you know, you know, circumstance that's happening because, you know, obviously the uh, Republican Party is a sinking ship, just like the Democrat Party. So you see a lot of these people, they're jumping off the ship, and unfortunately they're jumping onto the Libertarian Party. But you're not like that, though. You, you are a true Libertarian. You understand the Libertarian principles, and you, you're, you don't have to, you know, go and, you know, oh, let me go find the book real quick. You know, you know exactly what you're talking about. Well, I, I appreciate that observation, and, you know, you're right. I mean, without sounding unduly uh, self-interested, that is a key difference. You know, a number of people here in Arizona, we, we've got a situation like that, have figured out that the easiest way to get on the ballot is to run as a libertarian, even if they aren't libertarians. Now, this year, 2010, for the very first time ever, we have a contested primary for our gubernatorial nomination. We have four people running, only one of whom, as far as I'm concerned, is a real, true, proven libertarian, and that's my good friend Barry Hess, who was endorsed by the Arizona Republic as their choice in the primary. And it's interesting that the largest newspaper in the state would take the trouble and pay the attention to even bother to make an endorsement in a third-party primary. You know, they always pick their favorite Republican and their favorite Democrat. But this year, for the first time, uh, as a demonstration, I believe, of the fact that more and more people are looking seriously for alternative parties, they actually went so far as to look into uh, you know the qualifications and the campaign statements by these four candidates, and came out and said, uh, "If you're a libertarian, uh, Barry Hess is the guy you should be supporting." And they are correct in that. And Barry is is doing a great job. He's run for governor twice before, and uh, we are being taken more seriously. Uh, that's good. The flip side is that because it is easier to get on the ballot as a libertarian than, say, if you're running for president. To, to get on all 50 state ballots, or the great majority of them, 45, 47, however many, to do that starting from scratch as an independent takes millions of dollars, thousands, maybe tens of thousands of man hours. You've got to hire petition, petitioners. Uh, you've got to learn the rules for the petitioning in each state, which vary from state to state. Some are very reasonable. Some are very unreasonable, but you've got to learn the lay of the land. You've got to find people, hire them, stay on top of them, collect the signatures. That takes time. It takes money. It takes you know, logistical skill to go, well, okay, I just qualified in one state. Where's the next place I ought to have my petitioners go? It's a lengthy and complex process. It's been made deliberately difficult by the incumbent parties, the Republicans and the Democrats, to keep alternative parties off the ballot or make them spend all their time and energy uh, in that fashion. But it's still easier by far to get on as a libertarian than starting from scratch as an independent candidate, which makes it very tempting for anybody who wants a big national soapbox. You know, you can, you know, in Barr's case, you can capture the Libertarian Party nomination for like $150,000 as opposed to spending, you know, five, ten, fifteen million dollars to qualify for the ballot as an independent candidate. So we have seen that and we're going to see more of it. We have to be on guard against it and the only real uh, defense is to have good qualified candidates. You know, you you just have to have a better candidate than the infiltrator. Definitely, I agree entirely. And yeah, you know, one of the reasons why I supported Bob Barr's office because I was supporting Ron Paul you know, from 2000 up until the time when he officially, you know, dropped out of the race. And, you know, most of us were looking for a place to go. And then all of a sudden, in May, you had the Libertarian Convention. And, you know, Bob Barr, you know, won the Libertarian Convention. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to support Bob Barr. Because, you know, you, you want to support somebody, you know, instead of saying, no, there's no one I want to support. You want to at least try and, you know, be, be positive about it. Because I've been a Libertarian since 2004, when I woke up to the whole two-party puppet show. Uh, but then, you know, when you start looking at some of the candidates, you have to start realizing that, well, some of these guys really aren't libertarian, like we've been talking about. I mean, but uh, there's also good Republicans out there as well, running on the, uh, you know, running as pro-constitution, pro-liberty. But I mean, you're you're the guy right now in, in Arizona, in my honest opinion, that really has a chance to to make a difference in the Senate. Well, I I, I hope you're right. I, I appreciate your confidence, and I hope it's well placed. To get back for a moment to the to the situation with Barr and with what happened in 2008, I don't want to beat that into the ground, but it was interesting that it took six ballots at the 2008 convention for us to choose a nominee, and that's far more than we've ever had before. It took us three ballots 
in Atlanta in 2004. In most, in most conventions, it's been first or second ballot. This was clearly a case where you had a, a party that was um, factionalized, and uh, Barr came in with some degree of name recognition and a little bit more money, cut some deals with people, captured the nomination, installed uh, his cronies, and, and including some people who had been working on his behalf at the national office to make sure he got the, the presidential nomination, raised a little over a million dollars, uh, spent it all on things that had little or nothing to do with actually reaching the public, wound up stiffing some of his suppliers uh, talked to Jim Bovard, who ghost wrote Barr's campaign book and never got paid. The whole Bar, Bob Barr operation stank from beginning to end. Uh, I voted for the man, but I wasn't going to send him a nickel of my money because I knew it was all going to go into, into the pockets of various you know, crooks and cronies, and it did. And um, that's not necessarily Bob Barr's fault, but you could see that the money was going to go to waste. And then he snubbed Ron, Ron Paul at that press conference in September of 2008. Uh, it was a terrible campaign. I think we've learned our lesson. And uh, hopefully in 2012, we're going to have a, a much better candidate. I don't know who that would be. I talked a couple of weeks ago for you know 10 minutes or less to Gary Johnson, the former governor of New Mexico, who was attending the Freedom Fest in Las Vegas. And uh, he and I happened to run into each other and chatted for, oh, I don't know, five, ten minutes. And it's pretty obvious, although he's making disclaimers, that Johnson's seriously considering running for president in 2012. Well, he faces the interesting dilemma of what, what strategy should he follow. He can go for the libertarian nomination, which he would get very easily, I think, because he's qualified and he's articulate and he'd be a great choice. But then once he gets the nomination, it's a huge uphill battle in the general election. Or he could try to get the Republican nomination, which would be a huge uphill battle, and then if he got it, he'd have a relatively easy time of it in the general election. So the question is, which battle does he want to fight first? Does he want to make, th- take the easy road to the nomination and, 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 and a hard road on the general or vice versa? Definitely. It's decisions, decisions. That's what's coming down to 2012. We're talking with David Nolan. He's running for Senate in Arizona on the Libertarian ticket. His website, nolan2010.org. Back with him in a moment. You're listening to Freedom Files on American Freedom Radio. Tap into the truth frequency Sundays at 9 p.m. Central on American Freedom Radio. Freedom Radio. Welcome back. This is Freedom Files. We're live three days a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5 to 7. And, of course, the Saturday night show from 9 to 11 p.m. Central Time. Joined once again by David Nolan, running for Senate in Arizona on the Libertarian ticket. His website, Nolan2010. 2010.org, I got tongue-tied there. Uh, but, yeah, I, I took serious issue. I know we're, we're kicking this dead, rotting corpse known as Bob Barr, but uh, <laughs> when, I, when I started doubting him, David, was when he stopped showing up to the third-party debates. He, he, like, missed two or three of them, and then, you know, we were going back to that, to, you know, the Ron Paul press conference at the National Press Club. He, I mean, he had Nader, he had uh, uh, Cynthia McKinney from the Green Party, and, like, I think maybe one other person, but Bob Chuck, Barr... Chuck, Chuck was, uh, Baldwin from the yeah, Chuck Baldwin was there from the Constitution Party, yet Bob Barr was a no-show, and that's, that's when I spoke out, because... Uh, I mean, not only that, he started he started this whole violation of the Libertarian Party rules by you know trying to replace Root with Ron Paul as his running mate. Now, when I looked at the rules on the Libertarian Party website, and a candidate's not allowed to do that without permission from the Libertarian Party's council. Well, of I mean, course. he basically he basically violated the rules, and I spoke out against it. And I was at the time the regional coordinator in my area for the state party. And guess guess who got kicked out? Guess who got replaced as the uh, regional coordinator? Me. For speaking out, but you know it's no big deal. You know, I'm, right? I I'd rather speak out and get kicked out. Well, the bar campaign, the, probably the less said about it, the better. I I said at the time, and I don't know Bob Barr. I've met him once or twice. You know, shook his hand, said hi. Uh, I was very disappointed. I did not support him before the nomination. I voted for him afterwards because I thought, you know, 20 years from now or 10 years from now, when people go back and look at the record books, all they're going to look at is how many votes did the Libertarians get that year? And, you know, for the average person, 
they're not going to know Bob Barr from Michael Badnerick from David Berglund. You know, they're just going to say, well, what was the libertarian vote? Did it go up or did it go down? And we always want it to go up. So, you know, I've only got one vote. I, I can use it or lose it. And, you know, uh, so I voted for Barr. And my honest belief is that Bob Barr's goal in running was to build his own resume. I think more than anything else in the world, Bob Barr wants to be a talking talking head on, on Fox News, you know, up there with, with Glenn Beck and, and some of the others. And this was his, that was the only part of the whole campaigning process that he really seemed to enjoy, was being in front of the TV cameras. And... Uh, I don't think Bob Barr ever had the slightest interest in building the Libertarian Party. His website, when he ran for president, uh, didn't even have the word libertarian at the top of the page. You had to really search for it in small print. He was running, he put out press releases, or his, his campaign did, describing him as former Congressman Bob Barr rather than Libertarian candidate Bob Barr.